progressing in her knitting very well. She's now learning how to curl. What stitch pattern are you doing about you? I'm doing knit to pearl to. Which is known as what? Ribby. <laughs> and this is my first pearl stitching. You have to put your yarn in the front and then everything in the front instead of the back. Right. Yeah. And then what do you do so that you can do the knit stitch again? I put the yarn back to the back. Does it look bumpy? Yes! It does! <laughs> it, does it does what? It looks bumpy. Sorry. What looks bumpy? My my knitting because I'm doing the pearl. Yay! So the pearl stitch looks like a bump and how does the knit stitch look? Like a V. Okay. And then you knit two pearl to your ribbing is going to give you a nice pattern for this scarf. Yes. Okay, well, this hat's going to be big, big, big! I like it. <laughs> it's easy to remember once you got it. Yeah. Woo! Oh, I do that. Right here. I do it. Back. Go to the back and take your stitch off the needle. The needle is How many stitches? The needle is on his own. Mommy, do a video, please. Great. And I just put the needle through one stitch, wrap it around, and take off. Why don't you turn to the back so Mommy can take a video of your hands as you do it? Okay, perfect. Okay. Looks good, you see? Try pushing the stitches on your left side up. There you go. You know why you do that? Oh dear. My two little monsters. Knitting sisters. Knitsters. <coughs> the what is this crochet cast on? The what? For a crochet cast on for a hundred stitches. And the reason we're doing it with a different color yarn is because we need it to be open at the bottom. So what is that yarn that you're using for the cast the, on? This is a waist yarn that we're not actually going to need to be part of the hat. Too bear. I am currently knitting one of the first few rows of the hat that I was just stitch that I was just casting on and I'm trying to make sure that over here with the needle marker is not turning and twisting all over the place. Hey guys, welcome back to the Brownberry Chronicles. This is episode number five. I hope you enjoyed that little trip down memory lane featuring these two little superstars. Um, that was a glimpse back into the past of the first year that the girls learned how to knit. I taught myself to knit from books that I had picked up in the library in about 2005, and I you know, like many knitters, was crazy about it right from the beginning, was obsessive, and was I was knitting all the things. And some of those things I knit, these two were gracious enough to wear and not complain about it. They've always been good about letting me cover them in wool, even though we live in Florida. 
<laughs> so I thought after a few years that they were old enough to learn how to knit themselves, mm-hmm. and I'm so glad that they really took to it. They are homeschooled, and I think learning is just a, a part of who they are. So let me introduce them to you. These are my daughters. This is Adachi, otherwise known as Dachi Ducky, here on YouTube. Subscribe to her channel. Got great stuff going on over there. And this is Mizan. We call her Mizi. She's Mizi Bear Salas here on YouTube. So feel free to check out their channels as well. Be in the link in the description box below. Exactly. See, they're experts. They know about things like linking things in the description box below. (laughs) I'm the YouTube newbie. I'm learning a lot from these two. So I taught them how to knit, starting off with simple projects, as one does. Scarves, washcloths, basically any kind of shape. In the video, you saw Adachi working on a ribbed scarf. That was my method of teaching her how to knit and purl within the same project. She really took to that. And Mizan was working on a hat that she was making. So um, for herself, <laughs> Just like she is right now. Um, and working on that hat was a way of teaching her how to knit in the round. And these two, they're not very par- far apart in age. So they end up doing a lot of things at the same time or at the same point in life and learn from each other. So it's worked out really well. Fast forward almost eight years. And as you can see, they're pretty proficient knitters. I'm going to let them talk about what they're working on. So I am making a washcloth for my baby cousin. I'll show you here in just a second. Um, I'm doing a 5x5 five five rib, and I've actually created a pattern by every five rows just alternating the stitches that I'm doing. It just creates a cute little pattern, and it shows those colors, the purple, the blue, the white, and the green just mixes them up and makes it really fun. And what are the stitches that you're alternating? I'm I'm alternating knit and purl stitches. So it's a checkerboard effect, Mm -hmm. which looks great. Washcloths are such a great project for trying out different stitch patterns. They, um, They make it really easy to do something on a smaller scale, but then you come out with this very useful item. So we're big fans of things that allow you to be creative and try something new without getting too complicated too fast. What about you, Mizi? What are you working on? Uh, right now I am working on a hat for one of Mommy's co-workers. It is one of the projects that we are using to fund our California Dreamin' Trip. Mm-hmm. And I am partially working on this hat with my sister because it is going to be two hats put together so that it will have a reversible effect. They'll be attached at the bottom and you can flip them inside out to have a different hat color for your different moods of the day. I did the first half, which was all black. Hers has some beautiful striping. That's right. Um, I talked a little bit about this California Dream and Trip in episode four, so if you haven't seen that yet, feel free to go back and check it out. Muzi is knitting with Cascade Yarns. She's working in the maroon red color right now and striping in some of this black. I'm a big fan of what I call these kind of workhorse. A workhorse yarn for me is something that, I mean, you can count on it. Gauge is consistent. It is sturdy. um, Lots of great color options. And Cascade 220 is one of those yarns for us. As Adachi said, she's already finished the black half of the hat. Mm -hmm. Mizi's spending some time putting a little color striping into this half and when they're done you can tuck one hat inside the other for a double layered hat that is then reversible that's the easy as in elizabeth zimmerman very warm hat that pattern has been around forever it can be found in different elizabeth zimmerman books Um, i think it was even published in a magazine several years ago maybe vogue knitting Um, if you do a, a search on ravelry or online for the easy very warm hat you'll find that pattern. It's a great one. Uh, I've knit five of them myself. So why don't we talk a little bit more about the California Dream and Trip. As Mizi said, the girls are making things and selling them in order to raise funds for a trip they want to take this June. Adachi, why don't you chat a little bit about where you're going? 
Well, we are going to go to California for a YouTube convention called VidCon, where you can basically meet other YouTubers. There are concerts there. There are panels, which is when they are talking about their journey and things that they do on YouTube. There are many different things you can do. And it's just a really fun experience. So we're making things to save up money to go because it, it is on the other side of the country. Yes. So it's expensive. Yes, flying all the way to the West Coast does cost a pretty penny. But the girls decided several months ago that they would take on the challenge of raising money for this trip because it's something that um, they're really into. Their dad and I don't know half as much about YouTube as these two <laughs> experts. And they found out about this convention and are really excited about being a part of it. So we thought it would be a good life lesson for what it takes sometimes to achieve a big goal. And they've done a very impressive job of making people aware that they have this goal and finding support for it and then making the effort to create things that um, folks are willing to buy. And they've also done activities as a way to make money and raise funds. What are some of the activities that you've done, Easy? Uh, we've done some, we did a Watermania um, water selling a few, mm, it was last month, actually, yeah, I believe. Yeah, it was a weekend, a couple weekends, not even. That was a fitness competition where they had a tent and they sold water. Mm -hmm. And what else? Cat hmm. sitting? Oh, yes, yes, I remember that very well. Yep. We got to babysit one of Mommy's friend's cats for a while. It was very fun. Speaking of Mommy's friends, her, her and her amazing group of friends have been very helpful throughout making money for this trip. And Dachi and I owe a lot to them for helping us sell all of our knits that Mommy has also helped us make. And it's we true. may be teaching you some things about YouTube, but you are also along the way teaching us a lot more about knitting. Awesome. Which, I'm happy that we can have that trade. Yeah. I do have really awesome friends. <laughs> um, everyone has been very supportive. I've, you know, just mentioned knitting to a couple of my colleagues, and Ooh. they say, have the girls make me something, or yes, make me something, I'll buy it from you. And that way, they help to contribute to this project. They believe in the idea of the girls taking this on. So, um... Speaking of that, I guess I'll show what I'm knitting as well. I will never get tired of talking about this yarn because I love it. I'm making right now the Trillion Scarf by Martina Bain in beautiful. this hand-dyed yarn. This hand-dyed yarn is Monster Mash. The colorway is Monster Mash. It's hand-dyed by Lauren at Lolo Did It. Absolutely amazing so pretty. We kind of love this color. <laughs> These colors, I should say. You can see that in this Trillion scarf, if I just do a few more stitches here so that I can show you the way that this kind of speckled colorway is done up, um, it really showcases each of the colors. You would think that with so many colors going on, some of them may get lost, but Lauren's a genius. She's got just enough She's got just enough white and lighter colors balancing out the high contrast, darker colors that everything gets its time in the spotlight. So this is essentially mostly a garter stitch scarf, but in true Martina Bame style, there is a little bit of flare. So there is a lace edge going all down the side. I love lace. It's so pretty. We're big fans. I just had to know how to do that technique. This one is going to be something that would be very easy for me to teach the girls, and I've found it to be such a great travel project that I, I will gladly teach them this because it's something they can just pick a yarn that they like. It doesn't matter how many yards. It doesn't matter um, what weight of yarn. Just pick a needle size that gives you the fabric that you want and make yourself a beautiful neck accessory. <laughs> so that's so what's on my needles right now. Also on my needles is one of those commission knits. I'm helping the girls with starting out knitting fingering weight yarn. They haven't done very much of this yarn weight. Um, they knit some DK weight, some worsted weight, but yeah. 
sock weight or fingering weight yarn is, is not something they've tackled yet. So I started the toes, got a little yarn tangle going on here. I started the toes on a pair of socks out of Regia Floromania. It's a yarn I talked about in the last episode that was recommended to me by my friend Shamika, who lives up in New York. Hi, Shamika. Hi. Um, this is one of two pairs of socks that we're doing as part of the California Dreaming Project. So the Regia Floromania that we're using is so bright, it's probably given a a lot of glare. Yes. I mean, can we just talk about it's these pretty colors? pretty neon. It resembles watermelon in the slightest way. It's very neon and very beautiful, and the colors just go so well together. It shouts spring. It's amazing. Now, the person who requested these socks specifically told us that he wanted us to make them as crazy as possible. He did. So we went all out with those. I think once we... we yeah, I think... Once we start working on them, you know, when it gets to maybe the bigger part, it'll be really fun. I love when you can work with color because it just makes me really happy to see all the colors coming together. And it makes me enjoy the project a lot more. Exactly right. I, I, am, the same I am also working on another one of my projects. Let me just put this here very yeah, quickly. What else have you got, Maisie? Recently, I put on the needles again because I had to take it off the needles to work on another project. You but can't see all of you babies, so come over a little bit. Recently, I have put back on the needles my green hat that I'm working on for my mom's knitting club because she is so amazing. Not only does she manage all of her work, but she has an awesome knitting club where we're trying to work on hats. I haven't made it too far in my hat because I've had a lot of other projects I'm working on along yeah. with a lot of schoolwork that I'm trying to get through. So it hasn't made it too far, but I made it through this stage of the hat, and I'm just loving the yarn so much because it's extremely soft. This color is pistachio, and I think we got it from knitpicks.com. It was That's really right. good. It's a very good pick, and I'm very happy with the colors. It's a pretty I'll put easy it up knit. A little closer. It's a pretty easy knit because it's basically just knitting, but of course, since it's in the round, they all come out as the very soft, um, very nice stockinette. V stitches that I yep. love so much. Stockinette, that's a favorite. That yarn is uh, Knit Picks Comfy, and the girls picked colors for a hat project and a sock project, mm -hmm. and our homeschool group um, has a knitting club, which I've been leading for the last few months, and we have some folks in the group that are experienced knitters and a few folks that had never knit before joining the knitting club. And the girls have been very helpful to me in teaching some of those folks the things that I've taught them. So I love that ripple effect, and it's really cool to see people who've never tried something before get to the point where they're making something that they can wear and feel proud of. And the girls are still in that same category as well. They're making some really cool things, and they're able to see their skills turning into something cool. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Other projects? I think that's it for what we have on the needles. Adachi, you've got something that you finished recently. Why don't you yes, talk about that? this is recently off the needles, and um, it is still to be finished, but it is going to be a baby bib, also one of our commission knits. And I found this pattern from Ravelry, which I recently uh, re I've gotten a new account on there, and I like it so far. What's your name on Ravelry? Um, my name on Ravelry is Adachi AS. Dachi AS on Ravelry. Feel free to find her. I'm Brownberry on Ravelry. Meezy, I don't think, is on Ravelry right now. She we will get you there. into it. <laughs> I twist her arm. Yeah. So basically with this pattern, you knit uh, either a square or a rectangle, and then you make the long strap to go around the baby's head, and you make these small buttonholes with the uh, yarn over. And we're going to put a cute little button on this side so we can be, it can be adjustable for the size. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, Baby knits go by like that. Yes, they do. We have been doing a few of these smaller projects because there are two babies expected in our family in March, maybe sooner. Um, one grandbaby for me, my stepdaughter's due any day now. Mm -hmm. She's going to have a boy. And one baby cousin for the girls, my sister-in-law, is also due in March with a little girl. So it's giving us an opportunity to knit all the baby things. And they're so cute. And they're so quick. Love it. And mm -hmm. it makes something 
it allows us to make things for gifts that we can feel really good about giving. Yes, I love handmade gifts because when you put a lot of hard work into something, you just put all your love into it and yes. it just makes a really nice gift. Another thing about knitting is some people who know make very different size projects and stuff. They use a lot of different size needles. The first time that I saw a pair of needles that were about this big, which is what I'm knitting, this um, reversible hat on right now, they're a size 7 needle, so they have the same thickness as the needles that I'm knitting this hat on, but they are so small that they kind of are cupped at the bottom of my palms while I'm knitting. And mm -hmm. switching immediately over to these long needles, it feels a little strange. Yeah, and Meezy, what's that method that you're using for your hat right now, for knitting in the round? Oh, I hat? am doing Magic Loop, which I think I learned Magic Loop a few years ago. I've gotten pretty used to doing it instead of just plain knitting in the round like I'm doing on this hat. So I'm making sure to keep my two loops here and not let either one of them fall, because that would be very bad detrimental yeah so i just realized that between the three of us who hold up our projects we've mm -hmm. got a few different methods going on here so me is yes. knitting in the round <laughs> on a long circular needle magic loop she's using magic loop method um i have the knit picks interchangeable options needle set and i've bought different tips over the years so we're using the harmony wood tips the colorful ones those are beautiful we love those so we have a mix of those Harmony wood tips and the metal tips, as well as um, the lighter colored tips that they have available, the light wood. I'll link to those in the description. So Mizu's doing magic loop in the round. I'm also using knit pick circular needles, but my project is knit back and forth. Um, but I prefer these circular needles for this project because it's going to continue growing and having the cable allows me to just keep on going. Um, probably I'll be able to stay on this cable size for the whole project. I intend to make this scarf out of two balls of the Lolo Did It Monster Mash. So that will be close to, actually it'll be, yeah, close to 900 yards when it's done, but wow. I'm carrying it two-stranded. So I'm kind of cheating a little bit using a lot of yardage, but um, I think two balls of yarn will get me to the size that I want for this. Adachi is knitting on straight also needles. back and forth, but on straight needles. And I'm doing ribbing. Yeah. Which, er, so um, she's using both the knit stitches. Misi's using the, just the knit stitch. So I'm sorry, she's, Adachi's using knit and purl stitching. Mm -hmm. I'm also doing knit and purl stitching, and Misi is knitting, knitting, knitting all the way around oh yes to yeah. get that stitch you would yeah. have to knit and purl since it's in well, the round this one i'm not doing it in oh. the round i'm knitting in some areas and i'm purling in some areas just but, she's, the but she's using the cable the though yes yeah, I understand. i'm using the cable because that gives me more room no. so it's pretty cool i just realized that we're all doing something a little bit different mm -hmm. in our knitting methods i do love sitting and knitting with the girls i I think we should do it more. Yes, I think so too. Yeah, I, if we are invited, I would love because to be on some recently more. Recently, I found episodes. that even with like I just enjoy sitting and knitting even without my screen. Sometimes yeah. I'll have watch YouTube, you know, and knit. But even without it, I just really love doing it. I I agree with you. I've recently been knitting more, and I listen to podcasts. Let me see. I'm gonna I listen to audiobooks. Let's give some shout outs since we're talking about things we like to do. I listen to podcasts. Many of them are about knitting. Some of the ones I've been listening to recently are The Yarniacs, um, The Knitmore Girls. Oh, that's clever. <laughs> Stash and Burn. Um, I also like uh, True Canuck Girl. I think she's now called The Canadian Knitter. She's a very good podcaster. Um, and The Knit Girls. I thoroughly enjoy all of those. Some are audio podcasts. The Knit Girls is a video podcast. And I actually like listening to people talk about knitting while I'm knitting. Um, so check those out. I'll link to them as well. Why don't you guys give a shout out, since you're YouTubers, to some of the YouTube people that well, you love? Well, I would say that um, a lot of the times when I'm knitting or I'm Ooh. doing something Ooh, and I'm such. not quite watching my screen, I'll listen to, like, story time videos so I can hear people talking and don't always have to watch them. A few of the people who I like um, videos from are 
Gabby, who is a Viner. Her name on YouTube is The Gabby Show. And Superwoman, who inspired me to do my YouTube videos. Her name on YouTube is I, I, Superwoman I, I. And if you would um, like to read some books while knitting, I would suggest the Needlecraft series because yes. it does feature some uh, crafty elements and they're very cool murder mysteries mostly. The audiobook the Needlecraft series. The audiobooks that I've been reading recently is the, um, the Needlecraft mystery series that she was talking about by Marissa Meyer. I, I don't. I don't remember. Make sure we put the author. author's name in in the show description. Yes, but it features a woman named Betsy Devonshire, and she runs a craft store called Cruel World, and it features knitting and um, counted cross stitch, and a lot of other crafts that you can do. But she's also an amateur detective, so mm. there's a bit of mystery mixed into That's there. That's a cool twist. So it's called, one more time? Needlecraft Mysteries. The Needlecraft Mysteries. What age would you say that's appropriate for since you've listened to several of them now? 12 really? Up? Any age? Because Oh, oh yeah. I'm mean, not too young. I, 12 and up it seems about right. 12 and anywhere above that, I would say that you okay. would enjoy it. Yeah. But even adults, I think, would like it because the characters are adults. So they mm -hmm. y you could probably relate to their life and some of the problems they have and things. Yeah. Grown-up problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My girls are avid readers. They have always been. I think recently we've all not quite fully converted, but we do a lot of our reading by way of audiobooks. Yeah. Um, we all love the portability of that, and it has allowed us to keep reading at a pretty high volume um, because we have car trips to homeschool activities. We like to travel together as a family, so... Um, it's just a habit that we've all formed. So hopefully you guys will check out uh, some Overdrive. of those podcasts and some of the the um, stories through audiobooks. On there are apps available like Overdrive and Hoopla that allow you to download audiobooks for free and keep them for fourteen days, twenty one days, and, and uh, we get a lot of reading done that way. So we're gonna wrap up here. What would you guys like to share uh, about knitting? Adachi, what do you like most about knitting? What I like most about knitting is that it allows you to have a creative outlet to... You can basically make anything you want. And it, it can feel very personal, you know, if you're making it for yourself. And it can also be like a gift to somebody. So it's just a creative outlet that you can make a lot of things and okay. you usually enjoy making them it's just a That's nice awesome. hobby to have i like that Lizzie, um i have a different question for you actually Ooh. if you could knit anything you just don't think about complexity or having the yarn or any of that if you could knit <laughs> anything at all what would it what would probably would it be? be a hat and sweater set Ooh, Ooh cute would they be matching Matching colors, probably something a little bit like these colors, yeah. maybe in a <laughs> thicker yarn, um, so that they could match, but they wouldn't have only one color. And do you like pom poms? Hat and sweater set. Yeah, I what's your feeling on pom poms? I think the pom poms <laughs> are very good on hats. I do know that it gives it kind of a wintry essence, but if a pom pom was on a hat, I would wear it all year round. Me too. <laughs> Macy's our in house fashionista, so. Yes. <laughs> That's the word to the wise. Get yourself a multicolored sweater and hat set. Put a pom-pom on it. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the Brownberry Chronicles. Signing off for Dachi Ducky, Mizi Bear Salas, and me, Mars. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye! Bye.